Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Glad to have you guys here on this Wednesday, the 9th of February, 2022. We all want our lives back, <laughs> basically. Think about our lives in 2019. We all want our lives back. That's what it's really about, all about, Stu. You know? And... There's been a tremendous amount. I mean, just heaps and oodles and, and tons of, of misinformation, disinformation, and government overreach. Absolute, beyond bizarre, the amount of government overreach. Sometimes it makes you wonder how they could have such organizational skills all around the world in all these different countries to arrange all of this so quickly and get it all in, I mean, the whole thing just smacks of, oh my goodness. But what can I say? We all just want our lives back out here. And, you know, we don't want to end up living in a world that looks more like a penal colony. Uh, and if you don't know what that is, a penal colony, well, it's kind of like you can't do anything. You, you're limited red tape for everything. You want to go out and take a bike ride out in the forest or whatever. You got to have a license for it. You know, and in the end, and, and I've said this for years. I said this years ago. I said <clears throat> that in the end, I'll probably have a breathing license. And, I mean, if your license isn't paid off, they'll probably have some sort of steel clamp they can put on your face. I mean, how far do you want to let them go with all this nonsense? I call it nonsense. It's all control. Because at a certain point, they pass the Rubicon. They pass the line in the sand at a certain point. And all of the people on this side of the fence over here that are being controlled start to hate them. They know it, right? At that point, what they have to do is they have to create fear in the people that hate them so that the people that hate them don't turn on them. And this becomes a vicious cycle where they have to create more and more fear. And this is the cycle that some of these... Well, life becomes a living hell for not only the people that are on that side that are in the fear but also the people in the government themselves that are creating the fear. Life becomes a living hell for everyone on earth. And, I mean, nobody's happy then at that point. Because basically the whole earth, earth would become a, a penal colony. We don't want that kind of dystopian future for us or our kids. And, you know, our kids are already been all the effect that this is going to have, you know, and on on the kids out there. And that damage has already been done. And, you know, there should be accountability. After this crisis has ended, there needs to be accountability. There needs to be reviews done, uh, inquiries. Uh, what's their name for it? I mean, they, they will research the most mundane, stupid things and spend their taxpaying dollars on the most mundane, stupid things to research and, and inquire about. And what do they call that? Do a uh, investigate, investigation. They'll do an investigation into the stupidest things. Like, why does elephants? Why does an elephant's foot get infected? They'll do an, a research investigation and spend like five hundred million dollars on so stupid subject like that. But are they gonna sit back and research? Well, what just happened here to the world in the last two years? This made all of us in the whole world feel insecure about our future on this planet. 
I would think that that's what they should spend the taxpaying dollars on, is getting to the bottom of this whole thing. Finding out who was responsible, who or what entities were responsible for each and every malfeasance. What's the word I would use? What they've put us all through. Because, you know, all of us, we want our lives back, but we also want justice. And I think that this whole thing has been, a lot of it has been unjust and operating on quack science. Anyway. What can I say? But I mean, what we've been through, we have been through like if you had a scrub board. You ever seen them old-fashioned scrub boards that, the, that they used to use back in the 1800s that had all the bumps on it? We have been rubbed on a scrub board like we were a washcloth for the last two years. All of us. We've been through hell and back. And you know what? Are we just all, as a group, all of us, out here just going to let it slide? Because that's what they want to do. That's what they want us to do. They want us to all just to let it slide, baby. Now that the now that the whole thing's ending, and I mean this whole pandemic thing's ending, then why is it ending? Did they end it? No. <laughs> the virus ended it. My goodness. Because maybe they would have got it. Well, they were they were advancing awful fast in their agendas, whatever their agenda is, you know. And the virus now that the virus is gone. What are they going to do now? Take us to war? Is that their next agenda? What a bunch of criminal organization running this world! And you know, getting down to the nitty gritty of it, protests protests are are, are one thing. But there's other tools that the people should be thinking about. And one of the things they should be thinking about is investigations and getting down to the nitty-gritty of how this all played out and who was responsible. And bringing the ones who caused the biggest problems to task now that this is cleared out and all the mania is going to start to settle down, Then look back in history and find out just what went on and how it all went down. Piece it apart. Piece it to piece of little pieces. Inve not only investigations, but also accountability for the ones responsible. And uh, if you don't do that, then if that's not going to happen, if that's not going to fly then you're going to repeat this same thing we've went through, maybe a lot worse, <clears throat> over and over and over again. Because they'll pull the same tricks over. If they get away with it, they'll pull the same trick over and over and over again. They are a one-trick pony, but they can really make our lives, in the end, our lives wouldn't be worth two cents. If there's no accountability. So, I mean, I'm getting at the nitty-gritty of all this. The nitty-gritty of all of this is accountability for their actions, which have, I mean, they say saving human life. What's the point if they make every person on Earth's life so stinking miserable that people are going to be jumping off of bridges and stuff like that. What's the point of living if, if you're going to live inside a, a steel box the rest of your life? Quarantined inside a steel box the rest of your life. You're no different than the man in the iron mask, for crying out loud. What's the point in saving human life if you're going to make human life into a 1984 dystopian book where everybody is walking with a big frown on their face with, with some sort of 
uh, uh, chains on their ankles. What's the point? Anyway, let's get the markets open. Let's start the charts right here and take a look at what's going on. Silver price is right even with the board today. It hasn't went anywhere. It's at 23.17. Now we're going to take a look at gold. Gold today is 18.30. It's up $4.50 on the day so far. Uh, now what we're going to do is take a look at cryptocurrencies, you know, and we're seeing a Bitcoin price at 43,903. Now, we got a little jump in the price of Bitcoin and cryptos. Don't get too excited about it. People say, well, now it's disconnected from the market. I say, no, it hasn't disconnected from the market. Uh, what we're going to see is we see the market go down big. We're going to see Bitcoin go down, you know. But it will disconnect from the market at a certain point. It's going to disconnect from the market. And, you know, what we're waiting for on this channel, and we've been waiting for it for a while, is when the Fed does what's called a pivot. And this means they're going to change direction. Right now, they're all about sucking up liquidity and 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 uh, getting rid of inflation and everything else. Well, they're going to keep going with this. And no, the markets haven't dropped off really big yet, but it's coming because the Fed's going to keep, as long as they can get away with what they're doing, and they're getting away with it up till now, nothing really big's happened other than the bonds. The biggest thing that's happened is the bonds went up. Your bond yields went up. And that is a limiting factor for them. They can't let that go too far. But they're going to keep pushing this envelope. You know what it reminds me of? I used to know this guy down in Florida. His name was Mark. I'm not going to give out his last name. But he used to have what's called an ultralight aircraft. Nice, pretty little airplane he used to have, you know. And what he would do is he would go flying along at about 100, maybe 200 feet up in the air. And then he'd dive bomb the earth. And pull up on the joystick or whatever and, and do this swoop, you know, and he'd fly up then, back up again, you know. But he wouldn't come down and hit the ground, but he'd come down like he's going to hit the ground. A dive bomb, like whoosh, down toward the earth, you know. So one day he was doing that little maneuver that he had done a thousand times before. He's flying down toward the earth, you know, and he pulled up the joystick and one of those little, uh, uh, cables that goes to the back aerolons or one of you know his flaps on his air his little airplane, the cable went snap when he was pulling up on the joystick, and he rammed into the earth and he died. Well, that's what the Fed's doing right now, cutting rates and everything else. They're they're flying at the earth at full speed, and then they they plan on pulling the throttle up. What could happen is. Well, there's a myriad of bad things that could happen with what they're doing. They're playing a very dangerous game with these markets. And what's happened is, is these markets are different than the markets we've ever had in history. We've never had this before. We got markets right now that are so over leveraged with money that doesn't even exist. That money all starts to go to money heaven. Fear could enter in really fast, and I mean, this whole thing could just turn downwards into a spiral that could happen so fast. Uh, something similar, what it would look like is something similar to what it looked like back in, back when we first started the COVID, epi the COVID pandemic, and the markets were falling out of bed. It could happen all over again, and even worse, the markets could fall even faster, and what would the Fed do? Well, of course, they're going to have to come back in and support the markets. They just can't let the whole system completely collapse. That's not in the cards to let the system collapse. Because the system wouldn't know where to stop. The debt is over leveraged like 10 times bigger than the amount of credit that is out there. Like the credit, credit being the actual money, uh, you know, the, the fiat that exists. Uh, and it would all just disappear and, and, and freeze the system up and, and nothing would work and, and the system would crash. So they can't let that happen. They got to move in the direction of, of keeping the system on all these bubbles going forward, kicking the can down the road. So they would do a pivot when that happens. 
we're off into the hyperinflation at super hyperspeed. You think we got inflation now? This is nothing. This is just the beginning. And, you know, you think you've seen protests? These protests are minuscule. The protests that will occur once the hyperinflation gets out of control. Because nobody will be able to afford to eat. And so, right now you've got people who are well fed. Everybody who's protesting right now has got food. <laughs> They're not protesting because they don't have food. You think these protests are something? You ain't seen nothing compared to the protests that'll occur when the people don't have any food. They lose it. And those protests that'll come when the people don't have any food uh, will shut the system down so they don't get any more food. So, in other words, they might be going hungry and they'll protest because they got no food. And then they'll destroy any chance they have of getting any food in the future. They'll really make it bad. In other words, they'll be jumping from the frying pan into the fire. And basically, our system could completely shut down for a period of time. How long? And parts of it never be restored. And so you might be saying, well, when's this going to happen? Well, you guys will see it coming. You guys will see it coming in advance. And we're not there yet. It might take another year or two to get there. But that's going to be the big one. That's going to be the one that really makes you need to go change your pants. And it's a year or two away. Uh, because, the, in other words, the Fed... The Fed can't let the system, they have to support the system, can't let the system collapse into deflation. They will not let the system. And this means that they're going to have to continue to keep these bubbles popped up. And if they keep the bubbles popped up, what's going to happen is, is they, that leverage is going to increase in the system, like it has over the last number of years. And it's going to start to lead us into the hyperinflation. That's the inflation that we're seeing now. This is the initial stages. This is just the front side of the hyperinflation. The real hyperinflation will come, and then that in turn, see, what it is, it's like dominoes falling. What I'm trying to tell you guys right now is I'm just laying it out for you very carefully how these dominoes are going to fall and how in the end this system is going to collapse. So this summer, we might get a little period of a little bit more like back to normal again. This summer and this fall. And it might feel really good, and things might seem like they're pretty much going back to normal. Don't be fooled. That's just going to last for, like, maybe this summer and this fall. Then, when the hyperinflation really starts to hit, you guys are going to see it. You're going to see me on this channel, and I'm going to be telling you guys, hey, we're in the hyperinflation now. I'll be telling you, maybe a year from now, it might be two years from now, but I'll be on here and I'll be saying, hey, listen, guys, we're in the hyperinflation now. Now we're in it. And then it's going to get worse. And when it gets worse, I'll be telling you guys, listen, guys, it got worse. And then you'll all be saying, yeah, we know, we know. We can't afford nothing anymore. We're, we can't afford to eat. That's when it's getting ready. The real problem is getting ready to go down. The real big problems. And so a lot of the food and preparations you guys have made over this last year or two, it's a little bit premature. But you're better to be prepared because it could come tomorrow. It could. Really, this, this whole thing could just blow up tomorrow. I mean, blow up as in a term that just everything melt. The system could melt tomorrow. So you got to be prepared. But what I'm thinking is, I'm thinking it's probably going to take a year or two more. And a lot of the food that you guys have bought in preparations and stuff, you know, food doesn't last forever. Even canned food, you know. And so you might want to rotate and cycle it and buy more and keep those preps. Because you're going to need them at a certain point. Because this whole thing is not going to go away. There's a problem with the money that's only going to get worse and worse until it leads to the system collapsing ultimately in the end. 
But I don't think it's going to, I really, really, I don't believe it's going to be one of those things that's going to come out of nowhere instantaneously and catch you that way. I think it's going to be one of those things you're going to see it coming. You're going to see things get worse and worse and worse leading up to it, and then it's going to hit. And I don't think we're there yet. I think we got some time. And this summer, I think we got this summer, and I think we got this fall. I think I think we're going to have it, you know, this summer and fall. I'm not absolutely sure. I mean, I'm not not like I got a crystal ball here or anything. I just do my best to try to, to see ahead how it, things are going. And I use a logical progression of events. You know, I kind of lay it out and I kind of look at it like sh way Sherlock Holmes used to uh, solve th through logical deduction. Like you see that one domino is going to lead to the next domino falling. You know, that's how you work it out. And, and so I don't see any way out of this. They're going to have to continue to inflate. And your dollar is going to purchase less and less and less. And from other examples through history of hyperinflation, in the end, it starts to move really fast. And it's going to squeeze the people. And those are the dominoes falling. And ultimately, it's going to lead to the people uh, doing what they're doing right now with these protests and stuff. But on a, a scale, I think, 10 times or 20 times larger. And the system just ain't going to be able to handle it. Especially at that point, considering what they're going through with hyperinflation and everything, and you know, it's just gonna, it's just gonna melt. And there's probably gonna be about a four, four, three, four month period there where, uh, basically, the system just can't support everything it supports. And so that's when we're gonna see a period of population decline worldwide because it's just. That's just what happens if, if, if the system can't support us. We have to support ourselves uh, at that point, you know, and uh, we have to f try to feed ourselves with whatever w arrangements we have. So we haven't got a whole lot of time to prepare for this, guys. And we got to get our acts together because even the ones that are prepared, prepared of us, that are prepared the best, we can do better. And we got this little bit of time coming up uh, that's going to give us a little bit of leeway. Anyway, I've rambled on quite a bit. That leeway, I, I say, don't waste it. Don't waste it. You got some time, don't waste that time. Try to get as, make that time count as, as best you possibly can. Do what you have to do to make that time count that you've got. It's a little bit of a reprieve, basically from something that they set in motion back in 1913 with the Federal Reserve. They set up a Ponzi scheme, and this Ponzi scheme's ending, and you get a little bit of reprieve, a little bit of time left to prepare yourself for the end of the Ponzi scheme. Okay, so we've looked at this, and let's take a look at the market today. Up 277 points, 35,470. Let's take a look at crude oil. It's up 91 cents. It's across $90, $90.27. The move index today, 82.72. And now we're going to take a look at bonds and rates. Bonds and rates are fallen yields. Uh, the U.S. 10 years at 1.92 and the U.S. 30 years at 2.22. And they're still in the version because the U.S. 20 year is at 2.28. And, yeah, uh, let's take a look now at the U.S. dollar index, 95.45, and kind of sliding down a little bit. Thank you guys for listening to my show. Like and subscribe, and we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.